Hey, it's Tilka Espinosa joining me, at, not with the Avixa Top anymore. Yeah, yeah, I have uh, changed roles since last we spoke. Uh, I am now the Global Director of Education for Aurora Multimedia. And we're here at the Aurora Boot. We, we will are. spin around in a while. Um, Chuck, are you enjoying the new role? I am, I really am. Yeah. Uh, Paul has been great with Marcus and I. You know, they brought us in because they uh, wanted an edu they wanted an education program, and they didn't know how to start it, how to build it. They had no idea about uh, you know how to do a needs analysis for what education they needed. And they called and said, "You tell us what you need and and what we need to do to support you, and you build this thing." And uh, he said, "Go." Just, uh, you know, let me know what you're doing, how much you need, and, and do it. And I talked to a lot of people that wanted education programs. You know, there was a lot of companies that said, Chuck, you know, we'd like you to set up an educational program. And once we start talking about it, when you can tell when a company is very serious and when they're not, and when they're not serious, you say, you know, this is going to take so long to develop. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a six-month needs analysis. We're not going to have any videos or any content out for the first eight months. And they're like, that's... Yeah. That's expensive and time consuming. Yes, it is. And technology changes. With and that. technology changes. Uh, and when we talked to Paul and said, you know, if you really want to do this right, it's going to take this much time and it's, you know, it's going to, it's going to be a little expensive. And he said, whatever you need. It was the same thing. Whatever you need, you tell us what to do. You're the expert. What I love is like Paul's like just behind us there. Right? We spun around the camera. He's keep for joining me on All Things Techie. And uh, we spoke at length yesterday about your products. Uh, you, you've after stealing two the biggest names in the AV market in the past six months, uh, Chuck and Marcus, yeah. in one go. That's 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 that, that's like that's like stealing like a football team all in one. I don't know about stealing, but you know, made a compelling case to come work for us, and uh, yeah, we're happy about it. Uh, can't wait to see what all the different things that come out of them. Uh, not just to educate on our products, but to educate on the system as a whole and um, just the industry. So it's more than just you know, knowing about the products, it's also knowing about how everything goes together, whether it's a network switch or whether it's something else that's going to interact with the product. So education is key. Education is key. Like uh, some of the stuff that Chuck was showing me uh, earlier on, the fact that you have these wall plates with built-in HMI, instantly available to stream, I think it's just a fantastic product. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so, sure. so what's what's new? What what have you brought out to IC this year? Uh, well, for this year, we did uh, we brought some new touch panels. Mm -hmm. We brought out a ten inch, for a new, new generation ten inch uh, that looks like our eight inch and our four inch light wing. It's a full control processor. Has two serial, two IR, two relays, two IOs. We're also showing, not really officially released, because we're going to save it more for Infocom. Exclusive, but exclusive, exclusive, I think. Yeah. Kind of, it's semi-exclusive. You know, we, we were supposed to be behind the scenes, but it keeps just coming out to light. But we got a patent pending technology where we took a four inch desktop panel and uh, we added a beam forming Dante microphone into it with some other capabilities. Super. And it's going to just change the way people use their interface on a desk. I so like it. it's big, big change. But I just think the interoperability of your your system is it's huge and um, it's it's so clean so we the fact that you have processors behind your touch panels as well yeah and it's all standards based we uh we, our brain runs off of node.js and our uh our interface is just html so i mean we're using all industry standards so it makes it very easy to port into other processors to keep product supply going and that's the big thing we got going for us is we've been shipping I think our longest lead time to date is, yeah. well, longest lead time to date's been about uh, eight weeks, something like that. So it hasn't been anything terrible. It's funny, I was telling somebody else, even when our lead times are really good compared to other companies out there, we still get pressure, like, where's my product? And it's like, oh my God. Yes, yeah. Well, it, you know, especially in higher edge, you know, once we pay, it's like, you know, where is it? Why isn't it being put in? Um, so that's going to be released at Infocom. Uh, yeah, that is the plan. Uh, we'll be releasing it there, showing demonstrations of its full capacity and some other surprises there too, which that I'm definitely not talking about. Okay, and yeah, it's right there. So I, I do have some other tricks. We're going to show you a new type of distribution. That's the only clue I'm going to give you, uh, which well, basically gives you no clue. <laughs> no, it doesn't really, is it? especially when you are all about distribution. Yeah. Yeah. So we got, we got another way to do it now. So you'll see, it's interesting. With. The AV pros that's in the industry and they've, 
you have Chuck, you have Marcus. How soon can we look forward to like all these training programs coming online? Uh, they've been doing a lot of them. Uh, they've been I'd, doing a lot. I'd say probably by April and definitely by June, you're going to see a lot of changes on our website. It's our 25th anniversary. Of course, yeah. So, uh, we're so to are you going to be celebrating that at Infocom? Or uh, it's part of the plan. Yeah. So we're going to make it. Uh, we're going to make it interesting. Because I, I keep on hearing that, that like. Where you want to win the awards, where you want the attention is at Infocom over the IC awards and stuff like that. Uh, no, nah, it's not so much that. Timing's everything. Yeah. So, I mean, it is our, without a doubt, it is our backyard. Our booth is more than twice as large. So, it, it, it's our home playing field. So, yeah. it, it's, it, it is, you know, we're, we're from the States. So, that's where we put a, most of our energy. But we've been expanding a lot into Europe. A lot of our new products are designed so that they come out into European back boxes or American back boxes. So, uh, I've been enjoying, like the UK, I've been enjoying a lot. Uh, we go dealer direct there now. Yes. Uh, other places we go distribution. So, some we go dealer direct, some we go distribution. But, uh, oh no, I love Europe. The food's great here. The people are fun to, to work with. So uh, we're expanding. We're going to probably try to open up a local office uh, very soon. Um, you know, it depends on who the partners are. It's, it's all up to the, the integrators determine how much fun you're going to have. You got good integrators. You got good fun doing what you do. Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I love the fact that you're working on the boots. You're into, you're introducing yourself to everyone on the boots. You know, sure. and uh, it, it may be a smaller booth than some of the competitors, but like you have the products ready to go. You, you know what it is? You know, some people look at you know, and I, I know it's, it's really more or less. Do you want to pay enough money to buy somebody a fancy booth? Or do you just want to see the product? The other thing too yes, is you, I you want to see got, the product. You yeah. want to know why they got big boots? Yeah, I'm going to tell you the exact secret of why they got a big boot. Because in my world, when I make a product, I got two products that will do what 11 of their products do. So I don't need a lot of space to show two products for what their 11 need to do. Because if you look at what we do, we got a transceiver technology, mm -hmm. which we've developed over six years ago. So all our products are transceivers, even our wall plates. Yes. So I don't need a, an encoder. And that's wall what plate. I love. Yeah. You know, and I was saying this to Chuck yesterday that it limits the amount of troubleshooting. Exactly. You know, like as an as an as a technician in a higher edge, if I know that I, all I have to do is replace that place because it's one skew yeah so when you look like i said when you look at when you look at a box version for example you tell it to be the transmitter or the receiver it's got the fiber on it or the copper it's got the usb extension it's got the video wall modes it's got the image rotation it's got the blah 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 with the dante all that stuff yeah. in it you don't need a separate box for every little different di variation uh and then we don't charge you a whole heck of a lot extra for it so it doesn't have to be done that way but that is one of the problems with the industry is everybody are followers. Yes. They don't always lead and do something new and innovative. And us, we like competition. We like to innovate. That's yeah. the beautiful thing. Or disruption. Yeah. Because it's going to be disruption. Yeah. yeah. So if you do what everybody else does, you're going to get the same product with different price points with slightly different variations, but nothing changes. With us, we're trying to change the typology of AV, hence our slogan. We're always trying to think outside the box. We don't want to be like the other people. Yeah. We're not them. We're a war. We're different. People use us because they see what we're trying to do. do. Yes. Now, with all the training coming on, are you going to get in touch with the likes of Avixa and try and offer some OU points for, for uh, training? Yep, yeah, they're all going to be uh, inevitably CTS accredited. It's yeah. important. I know people like renewals. So, yeah, no, we'll work with the VIXA. You know, uh, they'll still be doing stuff for a VIXA from time to time. Uh, so, you know, we're not looking at just because we took, you know, points. Yes. Um, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, we're, we're not being nice guys about it. No, we're all a team. We're all trying to work together. Um, the situation presented itself where it was uh, time for a move for him and here's a yeah. diff different you know atmosphere and uh i'm excited like i i think that like i'm excited to see what training's going to come out of it you know but, oh, yeah, but like, so like there's, there's so much uh, of networking that i know but like marcus is a genius like you know I, uh, <laughs> when it comes to the networking he knows stuff so. yeah and i got another person who finally speaks in the booth other than me i know <laughs> so yeah. i'm enjoying that it gives my voice a rest uh, oh i know nice. well this, I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna finalize with the, this question: Is A V I T? Is I T A V? Are we are we all one, or is A V separate to I T? You, you know, it's funny. I've seen this debate for a long time. Yeah, you have. So have I. And uh, I'll give you the actual answer of what I believe. At the end of the day, 
An AV integrator should be the person dealing with the AV over IP and the network specific to it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't like it when the end users have the equipment on their network because when it comes time to troubleshoot it, you can't get access to it. You've got to rely on the fact that they set everything up right and the liability starts to split itself up. Mm -hmm. You've got to let AV integrators do what they do. Yes. They're there to not only sell the equipment, they're there to support the equipment and make sure the system works as a whole. When you start breaking it apart and saying, no, I'll, I'll supply the screen, I'll supply the network switch, I'll do this, it's going to go on my network, that starts to make it more difficult for them to do the job and makes it more difficult to support. You got to let them do their job. You got to let them make their money. Sorry, but they do. They have to make mm -hmm. money. It comes with the territory, but they're giving a value for what they're doing. And that value is your sanity is really what yes. it comes down to. So no, I, I like it when they buy the switch from the integrator. The integrator is now liable for that switch. doesn't mean you can't put it on your network, but let them be liable for it and then plug it into your network. And now you're in control of what comes across that bridge. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to hard plug it and shut it down because you think something bad's going on, well, go ahead and do it. So long as it's still operable. As long as it's still operable, but when it fails, at the end of the day, you're going to be calling, you're going to be blaming somebody. So if you're going to blame the integrator and say this product's not working, fix it, you've got to give them the ability to easily fix it. And that means they need full access to the network switch. Yes. So yes, I think it has to be in the AV. I could have this debate for a few, quite a few more minutes on this and give you other points of why, but I don't want to eat up all your memory on no, this. No, 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 please do. But, but at the end of the day, no, it, it's, it's really that simple. Liability is in one place. I, I, look, e even when you talk about, oh, standards and things like this, which I love, people are always arguing the whole standards thing. Yeah. So, and this wraps up into it. Oh, I want to use a standard because I could have interoperability with this and this, and I can plug this in. Yes, that is true to some degree. But think of it this way. You're installing a system. You use my transmitter for HD based T. Mm -hmm. Now you put in a projector, has an HD based T built into it. And this is not picking on HD based T. This could apply to anything. Yes, yeah. It's just the fact that there's two different brands. Now, for whatever reason, it doesn't work together. Who Why? Do you, who do you yeah. blame? Yeah. Who, who is it? The projector, or is it my piece of equipment? Now, my equipment just happens to work with a hundred other brands. But isn't that the importance of, of standards that we do? Have? It doesn't always work out. That yeah, way. yeah, it doesn't. We no. know the reality. There's yeah. a reality, but this is about liability. Yes. So think about it. Is it the projector fault or is it my fault? Now I could say mine worked with a hundred other products. I don't know. And then they could do the same thing. Well, mine works with a hundred other products, but for whatever reason, they just don't want to cooperate. Let's yes. just say, you know who gets blamed? Take a wild guess. The technician. No, the person who answers the phone. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, That's yeah. who gets blamed. Yeah. So if we answer the phone and we're helping them and the other company didn't help them, we become the problem. We become the one who has to fix it somehow. Yeah. The person who has the phone it doesn't seem fair, but it's the way it actually yes, yes. goes down. But here's the thing. When you start to use the same brand for the most part within the infrastructure, I get to guarantee the endpoints. When it doesn't work, I can replicate it in my facility. I can see the ins and outs or I can verify that it has worked in yes. that capacity. What really matters is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure is the key to the kingdom. Peripherals come and go on the endpoints. Uh, standards are neither here nor there. I know there's the argument between proprietary and standards, but when you actually look at it, what is a standard but a popularity contest? Yes, absolutely. At the end of the day, does it work for your application or does it not? But infrastructures, those are hard to repull cable. You look at what you want to identify, how long you want to expand, keep enough bandwidth for the infrastructure you're putting into play, and that can last you decades. Mm -hmm. Typical equipment, five to 10 years. Yes. So really, if you think about it, where do you put your money? Infrastructure. Yes. Other than that, where is your future proofing? There is no such thing. Well, how, how, on that note, Paul, how important is your after sales with our, like, someone buys your product, you know, you're talking about the phone lines, you're talking about support. Have you got a big support team? Uh, we, we, you know, look, like any other company, we try hard. Yeah. We, yes, we have a lot of people who want to support. At times, we get on the phone and all the phones are blown out. It happens at times. You get that right perfect storm where everybody wants to call on the same yeah, day. Yeah. It's, happens, like, it's like, it's, no it's like the end of, end of term or something oh like God. that. I, we just had a few weeks ago, we had a situation where we had, like, money Monday was great, Tuesday was hardly anything. Also on Wednesday, like everybody and their mother was calling us. Yes, yes. It's like, hello, is my son there? No, I mean, but really, everybody was calling us and everybody's picking up phones that can. And then finally got to the point where it was just like, and it wasn't just about tech support, it was sales, it was everything. Yeah. Everybody's chipping in. But 
it's like anything else. You can only have so many people. You can't have people sitting around doing nothing, nothing. either. But yeah. sometimes you get that. But what we tell people is, look, if you're really in a pinch, call the operator. Somebody will track somebody down one way or the other, and they will get back to you. We are working on updating our websites. We're putting in live chats on our websites. Nice. The whole point of Chuck and Marcus is to make a lot of videos, a lot of documentation, so you don't have to contact yes. us. So that you can find your answer on the knowledge base and go up there, type in some simple things, and it's already got the answer for you. Because a lot of it, it's just the same thing asked over yeah. and over again. But sometimes I find, and I won't name your, all your competitors, but sometimes I find with your competitors, it's like a Masonic type of approach to try and find the answer to a simple troubleshooting problem. You have to, you have to log in. Are you a member of this site? You know? Um, you, you know, for that, for the support, you do have to submit a ticket. Um, you don't have to necessarily log in. It, it makes it easier, but no, you just buy a ticket and it goes yeah. into the system and then it might get elevated. Uh, believe it or not, I get a lot of the tickets myself, and if I can chime in, I'll, I'll the answer. CEO answers tickets. There hey, we go. You do what I you like that. Do. Yeah. You know what? One of the things, uh, you know, people, see, I, I get that comment like, oh, you're, you're too involved as a CEO, you should be more low key. It's not so much, you know, some people say, oh, it makes you look like a smaller company. No, we're, we're no. a decent sized company. The reason why I do it is because I'm not just a CEO, I'm an engineer, I'm a CTO. Yes. When I talk, to the integrators, to the end users, where do you think I get my ideas from? Where do you exactly. think I, I, I got to learn what the problems are to solve the problem? So, like for example, when we had that call, I was finding out things that we, sh we if we would have had them in the debugging of our system, we could have solved it that much quicker. Yes. So you know what I did? I told my software engineers, stop writing new features. I want this, this, and this done. So this way, if this ever happens again, we can quickly identify where the problem came from. Yes. So that way, we don't have to waste a lot of people's time and it makes for a better experience. Sometimes having a new cool feature like, like a quad viewing or whatever that wasn't existing on a product before versus having it tell you what's going on yes. is worth more in the long run than having that cool little feature. So that's what I'm doing right now on some of our AV over IP products is uh, we're gonna auto identify when there's certain combinations that you know there's gonna be no compatibility and make them understand why there's no compatibility. And that's the key thing, explaining why. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't just throw up an error message. No, like I'll give you a perfect example, that's a big problem. A lot of people are like, uh, especially the schools and stuff are updating their systems, but they leave behind the projector. Well, a lot of the projectors that are still out there are HDCP 1.4. Yes. So what happens when a brand new system, brand new 4K screens, they all have HDCP 2.2. Yeah. You plug in your Apple laptop, it negotiates a 2.2. Now you route it to your projector that does 1.4. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to just crash. It's not going to work. Yeah. So how do you know that? How do you know that that's the reason that it happened? All you see is no image on the screen. I need to tell you that's why it's happening. Yeah. Hello, you got 2.2, 1.4, not going to happen. Yeah. So that's one of the new things we're throwing in there. It sounds simple, but a lot of people don't do that. And it's very so you just wonder why is it not working? Oh, maybe I got to do this, maybe I got to do that. No, no. Your, your HTCP is not compatible. It's never going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's, that's it. It's being recorded right now. Okay. I'm talking to somebody over here. Too yes. Well. Yeah, we're doing that. You have an appointment right now. We have oh, an appointment. Yeah, an appointment on that note, thank you so much, Paul. It's thank great you. to have you on all things techie. I, I've been dismissed from this. See how that works? See, that's, that's <laughs> Even it. I got on the boss.